Hello everyone, and welcome back to the complex found footage. Pretty much the Backrooms game at this point, and one that I played a couple weeks ago, and since then you guys have told me that it's received a pretty sizable update in which things were added, removed, changed around, and so I'm really interested to see what's been done with it. Let's get right in. Oh, do you hear that? There's like a low wind. A sound like it's blowing through here. And we're starting off in a penned-in area and the intro is completely different. It didn't show any of that other stuff from before. Right away, we're in the darkness. Uh, I can't seem to use a flashlight. I can still zoom in like before, but I can't turn on any kind of light. Yeah, so here we are, navigating the back rooms. I can't even use my old experience now because it's a completely different layout. I guess I'll have to determine if it's completely different or if we've just spawned in a different area. And remember, this is found footage, so... Well, I can... You saw that, right? Now, as some of you guys told me in the comments for the last video that there were, like, shadows or something at points in the video that I didn't notice. I never saw anything except for that one in the hotel hallway, but... Uh, even when playing back, I didn't see what you guys were talking about, but that, I'm pretty sure I just saw something. But without a light, I'm not going in there. No way, no how. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> there is no in there. It's just a dark room, but uh, maybe I shouldn't press my luck by going inside. Or through there. See, even though I can see all the way through, I feel like I just don't trust that darkness. Now, it seems also that uh, the lighting has gotten a pretty good upgrade as well. Like, there's a lot more variation, e even though the lights are all the same. There's, like, differences in the coloration and intensity. And so it makes for these weird, like, pockets, even within these samey rooms. I gotta say, there's, like, a lot of small changes that are adding up to something a lot better here. And already my opinion of this is a little higher than it was before. Which, I have to say, from the comments in the last video, I feel like a lot of people got the impression that I didn't like it because I criticized a lot of things. And, you know, it's not even that I criticized a lot of things. There were a few things that I had major issues with. I might have seen something just there. Maybe. Really, the only two things that I criticized, actually, were, like, the concept of the back rooms and me just not being that interested in them, which isn't a fault of the game. And kind of the, the annoyance of wandering around the maze trying to figure out where I'm supposed to go. What is that through there? This room's a little different, and I can definitely see some shapes in the darkness, but without a light. Unless there's a different control for the light that I'm forgetting. Because I know it did take me a little while to find it the last time. And I can just barely kind of hear that really crunchy sound of walking on the carpet. And in the comments for the last video, some of you guys actually told me uh, the one piece of backrooms lore that I actually think adds to it, which is that the carpets are actually meant to be wet or, like, damp.
that just adds so much to the back rooms, I think, because it means you're wandering this endless space and you can't even lay down. You can't sit down because it's just one of those things that's uncomfortable. And in a situation like this, that discomfort is everything. And you'll know you're truly worn down when it starts to not actually seem like such a bad idea. Arrows on the ground seemingly forming boxes and pointing to nothing. This really is an Ikea showroom. Look at those reflections on the tape! Somebody speculated that this game might be ray-traced. I don't know if it is, but it sure looks like it. And in fact, even though I criticized the, uh, the inclusion of the found footage aesthetic, because I kind of thought that it's just kind of done for the sake of it, I did have to say that this is the best implementation of found footage that I've ever seen. It's the most faithful recreation of the VHSC look, because it's got that, not just grain and aspect ratio, but the bleed on the edges. Nothing is really too clearly defined, and it actually enhances the graphics because if it were like a fully sharp 3D image, the fact that it's a 3D image would be all the more obvious, but here something was just down there. Something appeared and disappeared. But by blurring those edges, by obscuring that image, it actually almost makes it seem, paradoxically, photorealistic. Is this seat meant for me? It's like it's laid out waiting for me, like it's like after all the time that I would have spent wandering, knowing that I can't lay down on the carpet for fear of discomfort. It want, it's like inviting me to sit down. Which in this instance is kind of like a box being held up by a stick with a carrot underneath, don't you think? Yeah, I am going to be spending most of this backrooms area just kind of addressing the comments to the previous video. Uh, because there is a little bit to get through. So, I, I, like I said, I criticized the inclusion of the found footage uh, framing because I do feel that it needs to be used as a framing device and not as just an aesthetic for it to be really justified. But one of you made a really, really good argument that has actually reversed my opinion on that for this game. And that's that... That wasn't like that before. Oh yeah, it was. <laughs> it's just I came from that area and I turned around to darkness and I thought I'd been tricked. But basically, the idea of the back rooms is it's this place that you can just randomly end up in. Some way to get here that, like, there's no way we could ever recreate allows humans to end up in this sort of back end of reality and nobody ever makes it out. So how do we know about it? By the footage that made it out. From the few that happened to have a camera with them when they ended up inside. And so in this way, it increases your sense of dread because... I, I asked the question, why aren't we seeing this from the person's perspective? Why are we seeing this from the camera's perspective? And the answer is, it makes it all the more scary knowing that if you're seeing this perspective, it's because they didn't make it out. And how did that camera make it out? Well, we don't know. Maybe something wanted it to. Uh, that's some serious wobble, although it does seem like we're sprinting a little bit faster than we were before. I think one of you said that they increased the sprint speed, and I definitely see the difference, but even then, there's it seems like there's a lot more to see. I'm just more interested in the environment. Speaking of being interested in the environment... Instead of the elevator, we now have a seamless transition into the mall. Only now the lights are all off. All we have is the glow from the information sign. Oh look, you can even see the reflections on like the dirt and smudges on the lens.
I mean, this is the first big difference we've seen, but even the small differences are huge. They're, they're just quality of life things that make the experience so much more, I think, what it's set out to be. Are these carpets wet too? Because those bright lights overhead, I could see myself just kind of laying down in the stairwell. The audio is also, like, it's very faint. It's very muffled. Very much like a VHSC recording. Are these going to be the pool rooms? <laughs> I don't like that hallway. Please be something better here. No, it's just more back rooms. Only very notably, we've now gone downstairs in the back rooms. What is with this cordon? It's almost like being on a line at some kind of attraction. And down there is the area where all the animatronics and stuff would be. Are we in the final act of Inland Empire? Look at this. I could swear I just heard a footstep while I wasn't moving. Oh, just look at that image. The grain and distortion on this look, it actually makes it look like one of those low quality images that might be posted to X along with a story. One of those all I managed to snap was this picture type of things. And look at this. We know from walking in here that this slopes downward. But when we actually walk in, it almost looks like it levels out. Because we're now aligned with the floor. I don't suppose we'll be able to open these doors, no. I should probably check the controls to see if there's a flashlight, because the sooner I figure that out, the better. Uh, it doesn't say any controls. Do I just wander in? Uh, maybe it's been redone so that I don't need a flashlight, because there's always been somewhere to see from where I'm standing. We could walk over to there. Oh, the zoom is agonizingly slow. Or just continue onward. A meeting of minds. And a window onto blackness. Now this... This is liminal space imagery if I've ever seen it. Now, I imagine a lot of this game is based on various photos and 3D renders. And I do appreciate the ones that look more like photos, where it seemed to lean more into the latter before. Do you hear that? There's like some weird, like, resonant moaning outside the windows. And I definitely keep hearing what sounds like something moving. Now I'm paranoid because it feels like there's something in here with me. Is there something down there? That's a very irregular shadow. And I feel so much more lost now, knowing that all of this is interconnected. 
It's no longer separated by the hard line of the elevator, which, by the way, that's another good change in this update. The whole thing is just one endless maze where... Moving to something that looks new feels like progress, but it's... I, I don't know, it's... Not really, like, I have no reason to believe that that's progress. It's just that, by being in a place that's different from where I was before, a change of scenery is the only form of control I guess I really have in this environment. And even then, I don't decide what that change will be. A headless, halfway armless statue. Is this a statue that actually exists? I'm not familiar with it. But it seems like it's standing guard over the gallery. I mean, look at this, a gallery with nothing in it. Oh, it's Liminal Hotel! This is like one of those, like, little children's windows at an aquarium where you crawl into a tiny little room to look through the glass into a tank. Only the exhibit is the hotel itself. Some lights on and others not, indicating some form of inhabitants. But no. Are these dark hallways, or... Is the wall only a few feet behind the shadows? Do you hear that? It sounds like machinery. Or, like, the sounds of, like, a, a train station or something? And here's that classic view. Wow, this developer really did a lot in a short amount of time. I mean, uh, this update must have been in the works for a while. <laughs> and look at that share asset. It's even got the realistic, like, dings in the corner. This one, part of the layer has been peeled up. It's really got the subtle details of what school chairs look like. Alright, we've got to find out what's over here. Ah, yes, I remember this! You know, I actually have... I have a new interpretation of this area. In the last video, I, I likened it to being like a prison, where all the bridges are attracted. Only now, and especially now that it's playing those sounds... I, I feel like it almost is a dreamlike representation of the anxiety that you get when you step up to the train platform. Where you're walking up, you know that it's not really safe. You know that there's the danger of falling in that gap. And it's not like it's difficult, but you're still kind of a little nervous as you approach, nevertheless. This is not what was... I don't think this is what this looked like before, is it? I don't think this is what this looked like before, unless I came a different direction. Did something change on me? Or did I leave a different way from where I came? No, I think I, I must have come from this way, right? I must have. Yeah, on the left there, that divot, that's where you go into the little... into the little peaky room. Okay. Thought I was losing it for a second. Is this just a wall? 
No, we can make our way around the corner. Is this an elevator? Standing in here, turning around and looking at those shadows makes me feel like something's gonna happen while I'm waiting for the doors to close. Only now do we load a new area. Wow, they packed a lot more into that first area. But now here we are into the dream pools, and this looks more familiar. More like what I saw the first time around. Is there something there? Okay, the more I looked at that, the more I felt like my spine chill. Uh, I'm j picture what that is. That almost looks like the head of like a like an eel or something leaning around the corner. Like a cylindrical, black, slimy head with two big white eyes on the sides. Oh wait, no. <laughs> it's just the edible plants from before. Good god. I did that to myself. Now, now that I'm pretty sure that there's shadows moving around in here, I guess it's kind of like I'm making my own. Yeah, this update is definitely better in a lot of ways. I don't like the echoing off the tiled walls. See, it's long been a subject of interest to me. Why is this a space that so many people seem to sort of resonate with? And no bike riding, sad. That ruins my plans for the weekend. I mean, it seems like these like weirdly complicated pool structures are something that a lot of people have had dreams about or had some kind of reaction to when seeing renderings of. Sounds like choir music. It's eerie, but at the same time, I kind of like it. It's like when you walk into a big cathedral during a service, and you're in that sort of front area before you enter the main chamber, and you can just hear the echo of the choir. In context, it's a little creepy. Makes you wonder where it's coming from, what it means, but also, it's quite relaxing. I mean... I'd be hopping over this railing and falling asleep on that chair. Best place to sleep we've found yet. Actually, speaking of a big cathedral, this almost feels like some kind of religious structure, doesn't it? I almost don't want to leave. I want to stay with that sound for longer. But then again, maybe it acts as some kind of siren song. Now it's like... That place was pretty well lit, so now it's kind of like I'm moving away from the light, moving away from the music, into the shadowy silence. fall down there. If I do, I don't know how I'm getting back up. Or maybe it won't let me fall down there. I don't want to experiment with that. And here's our ride. I, 
I loved that segment, and it's... I'm having a difficult time articulating why. That was a level of comfort that really didn't seem right for here. Oh, great. It's here again. Well, let's have a look to see what we can see. Actually, that floor looks really dirty. But it appears to be relatively unchanged. Except for this corner. Now if I turn around, how far can we wade in? decently far. And that's what I was worried about before. See, you look down here and you see that thick wall of blackness and you just have no idea. Does it only go back a few feet or... For all you know, it could extend into an infinite maze of hallways. Not like you'd have any way to tell. Yeah, this increased movement speed definitely encourages you to explore more. I feel like when I was in the backrooms area in the previous part, I was kind of encouraged to just get a move on because I knew how slow I was. All I wanted was to find the exit. This kind of makes it easier to walk around. It makes the whole game more palatable. Hi. I sort of expected you, but... Uh, my heart still skipped a few beats. I can still hear those breaths, like when it first appeared sometimes. Huh. This is weird, it's like it's just an interconnected length of chambers, each with windows but no doors. Windows which see through. While culminating right here in the hallway that I need to go through. Feels like uh, when I was like five or whatever and I briefly wanted to be an architect. These seem like the kind of things I came up with then. I'll just make my way to the light. I really didn't mean to come down this way, but just make my way to the light. There's that radio again. Or I say radio, it's more like an intercom in its implementation, but it's like it's cycling through different channels and occasionally it picks up on something, but only for the briefest second. And I feel like that creates sort of like a sense of irritation, of agitation, where you're trying to make sense of what it is, but before you can even decipher what kind of thing it sounds like, it's already gone. And this, as we remember, went out onto more back rooms, but whoa! Them some high ceilings. And this structure over here, it's kind of like being trapped inside a shoe rack. But it's only the briefest portion of back rooms before it circles back around and back into that hotel hallway. Is the... Was that? Wait, 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 Okay, there's like a, there's like a sconce there. Okay, I, I, for a second I was thinking that maybe that thing was back just in that dark gap. Those lights were not doing that before, and those chairs, benches, were not doing that before either. 
Christ, were they even there before? I wasn't even paying attention to that. Uh, see here, that, I think that's an underutilized uh, aspect of horror or creepy spaces is having a hallway in which you can clearly see both ends, but there's just a short distance of unlit area between them. I don't like the with the way that sound is mixed. It's so realistic. A bunch of chairs piled against the doorway. What did it and why and what would happen if I were to climb over to push through? I think guessing at the purpose of all this is one of the most intriguing things of the back rooms. Because some parts of it feel inhabited, some parts not, some parts feel like there's intention, and others just like it's a random amalgamation of, like, universal source code. There's that breath again. That was one of my biggest pieces of speculation in the last part, was are these just imitations of things that humans have built? Or are they like pieces of the universe, almost like chunk errors? Like it's taken pieces of our world and just kind of scrambled them together in this area in a nonsensical, non-intentional way. And also what is going on with the lighting in that corner? Ages against brick walls. A broken wooden floor. This is a scaffolding, and they've done something very horrible and implied that there's multiple levels crisscrossing with our own level. There's normally not a lot of verticality, but here it it doesn't add verticality, but imply it implies that there is. That we're only accessing one small part of the puzzle but we have no idea how to get to the rest. That breathing is getting louder. Wait, I remember this. Okay, there's... I'm gonna search around a little bit more, but we have to remember landmarks. Oh, this is such a mistake. There's an elevator over there. But this is that area that I mentioned uh, in the previous part that sort of evokes feelings simultaneously of like a courthouse and a store. Simultaneously. I mean, liminal spaces, I feel, they often have imagery of two different types of spaces or more, but don't really fully complete the look of either. I really got to maintain a sense of direction here, but I'm so curious. Those freezers aren't here anymore. Now around through here, this area with the tall ceilings, that's where the elevator was before. In fact, I wonder if there's not maybe multiple elevators now, since so much has been added. But I also feel like everything's flowed pretty naturally. I feel like by following landmarks, at least to the best of my ability, I've always returned to some place where I need to be. Now what's the deal with these doors? Remember, I also saw them in uh, GM Void Spaces. I wonder if they're not maybe part of uh, the greater lore. Which, to the game's credit, I mean, last time I was talking about how I feel like the lore Sort of makes the back rooms less interesting, but 
I think that might have been projecting a little bit because the game doesn't really go into the lore, and I don't really feel like you need to know any of that stuff to play it. I did not like coming in here and hearing footsteps. Wait, no. I think this is where I came in. Thought I just saw something right there. Okay, now I'm going to start running around looking for something. There's got to be something else here. Maybe if I... Maybe if I go by my prior knowledge, maybe I can find what I'm really supposed to get to. I keep thinking I hear I hear the crunch of carpet from things that aren't me. But never on the tile. Oh, what is it that is so unnerving about high ceilings? Also, there's something about the idea of ceilings that extend so high that they actually go beyond the walls. Which again, is sort of a callback to like big stores like Costco or Beaches, where I guess in this case the walls would be substituted with shelves, but our prior knowledge does get us back here. Come on, please close. Please close, thank you. Now, from a horror perspective, I actually like how it kind of makes you wait for an uncomfortable amount of time before the doors start closing. It, it really makes you think that... Something's gonna happen, okay. It was just transitioning. I thought the, uh, I thought the lights had gone out. I hear crickets. I hear crickets, but you're really gonna make me crawl into a dark area? Oh, but it may not be a long crawl. The stars in the sky, the street light overhead. Uh, the street's so narrow that the lights are actually uncomfortably close. That is a weird, jagged pattern stretching off. And this time, I'm going to take the time and really search this. Because I feel, watching the footage back, that there were some things that I might have missed about it. And some of you guys pointed something out in the comments that I was going to comment on, and then I forgot to. But a regular suburban street, bathed in a red glow? I've had dreams like this, and from the comments, it seems like a lot of you have, too. And why is that? Why is that another thing that seems to be such a common image? I think that's one of the big reasons for liminality and its prevalence today. It's these dreamlike images that, for whatever reason, seem to be almost universal. An experience that a lot of people share, even for how abstract it is. And why, psychologically, is that a thing? Liminal spaces, I think, are about a lot more than discomfort. There's so much research that could be done into this. Because it's not just about the discomfort that certain spaces create. There's that door closing. But this is open now. Before, this was a barred-off staircase going up to an attic, but now it's leading downward into... into nothing. It just ends in a wall, but because of the perspective... It's actually almost like 
we should be able to crawl through here, but we can't because there's just stairs coming down just below. That's weird. Ima imagine stairs just not quite meeting their target. There's a concept I hadn't considered before. Also, all these doors are just kind of ajar now. I I'm going to talk through this because uh, if this is anything like the previous video, I'm going to have to mute this because uh, content ID will pick it up. But yeah, this whole house is just one room with a single radio. The closest thing to actual human music that we've heard the entire time, and it's not even anything particularly special. It's just kind of... Like the kind of thing you'd hear in between shows on late night television. I also noted last time that a lot of these houses don't actually have doors. The ones we can't enter have the appearance of where an entrance would be, just minus the actual entrance. With how dreamlike all this is, it's almost weird that you can see actual plain English text. And now to top it all off, there's a tunnel at the end of the neighborhood, which is weird enough all its own, but the houses don't stop for the tunnel, they just continue on the sides of the tunnel. Uh, points for efficiency, I guess. Points immediately lost due to air quality. Please close. Please close. I always feel like when those doors are closing in that last moment, like something with long spindly arms is going to grab the sides and shove its face in and yell. And that's going to be the end. Uh, the one to the left, I almost thought there was a silhouette of a person for a moment. Now this to me is one of the more fascinating areas. And I'm, I'm trying to repeat just a little bit of my commentary because I want this video to be accessible even if you haven't watched the last one. But th this is the only one that's a truly wide open expanse. I mean, we sort of have an open area in the form of the neighborhood, but it kind of has a Truman Show vibe to it. With this, and if it weren't for the invisible walls, I'd feel like I could wander forever. But wait, now it's actually a row of houses. Instead of just the one. Many doors that were closed before are now open. And so in that way, replaying this is actually a worthwhile experience all its own. It sort of reminds me now of actually a recurring dream. One of those dreams where you return to familiar areas, but things are a little different each time, and you sort of note the differences to varying degrees. Like, you sort of know wait, this isn't supposed to be like this. But at the same time, it feels like you've always known. It's it's like, you know in those dreams where you can't run? Where you run extremely slowly and your legs feel really heavy, and maybe you have to try to crawl on all fours or lean on the wall to push yourself forward? And I don't know if this is a universal experience, but in those dreams, I always find that it's frustrating, but I get the feeling that it's always been this way. Like, I just curse the fact that I can't run. But it doesn't feel like a sudden affliction. And after playing Stalker, I felt like this was one of those little, uh, one of those little hooded guys. That was my immediate panic reaction. 
But but the back rooms, they're just so sterile. Ah, uh, here's our elevator. They're so sterile, and so when you find those odd patches of damaged walls, of property left behind, of chairs knocked over, it's just so weird. Uh, men, 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 men. Women, 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 women. I shall make my choice quite readily. And we'll move on. Oh, there's a little bit more to this. Weird, just like a pool change room type of entrance, just in the middle of this house in the wasteland. Before we move on, let's just check out the last one. Hmm. Just like colored sticker discs on the ground. Reminds me of like a cheap mall from the 90s or early 2000s. Let's use the reverse space test to figure out how far this goes. Nope, this hallway ends here. This whole building and we can only see... Oh! Huh, I get it. It's supposed to be like... Uh, I mean, I can't really read the... Is that Spanish? But I, it looks like maybe the back, like, changing room area of, like, a, a department store or something. Let's get a move on. I feel like the back rooms really capture that stream of consciousness logic two dreams. I mean, I feel like every area that we've moved from one to the next has been just sort of related, just a little bit similar to the previous one. Oh no. Oh no, we've reached the end. We've reached the end. We've reached the end! Huh. So the camera falls vertically, almost like it continued that motion, like it phased through realities in between. And we end with these images, sort of a replacement for the ones we got in the beginning before. A lot of interesting changes here. And I have to say that the improvements are massive. I mean, I enjoyed that a lot more than I did the first time around. And here it is, some areas heavily inspired by Kane Pixel's Backrooms, which is a series that a lot of you guys have been telling me to watch. I will at some point. Because a lot of you guys are saying that it's kind of the definitive take on the Backrooms. And even though I'm not really that into it, you guys have also been telling me that you don't really need to be that into the lore to get it. Like, it kind of stands on its own and does its own thing. So that was the update to the complex found footage, and... Yeah, much better. Bravo. And I feel like the criticisms that I had, people kind of weighed more than I intended them to, because I still liked the experience the last time. I just didn't really feel that into it. This time around, it engaged me a lot more with the way it was laid out, with how much more seamless a lot of the exploration was, with how much faster we could move, I'm also really glad at how sparing the use of scares was. I mean, I, I don't know how scripted the shadows in the back rooms were. I, I know the hotel hallway one is. But I, whenever I it was pretty sure I saw something, I was never completely sure. It's only because you guys were shouting at me like, yo, there was something over here, there was something over here, there was something over here in the last part, which, like I said, even on replaying, I didn't see. But this time there were some things that I think I did notice. And it didn't happen frequently enough, and it didn't happen obviously enough that it just became like an Easter egg hunt to see how many of those I could collect. 
There was only one or two times where I'm like 90% sure I saw something. And a whole bunch of times where I'm like 20% sure. And that's a very good way to do it. It kept the paranoia up that I'm not alone. And actually managed to do that without losing the fear of just being alone. And so I think it struck a really, really good balance with that. Really, I think this addressed pretty much every criticism I had with the previous version. My, my one new criticism, and you can honestly take this with a grain of salt, is that I wish it hadn't removed so much of the Maw. What little is there, I think it did a little better. But maybe I'm biased, because I just got done with my Explorers of Dead Maws. But that was one of my favorite environments, and maybe there's stuff that I missed, because I know there were some hallways that I didn't go down, there was probably a lot more hallways that I didn't see. But that's a very minor criticism, and whether there's additional updates in the future, or whether the developer just wants to leave it as is, I think it's in a pretty good state. And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, it's completely free on Steam. And as always, I will see you in the next one.